Hey everybody, I'm back. And um, today I have the 2025 Cadillac Lyric. But that's not actually what I'm interested in talking too much about today. Uh, what I'm actually going to be talking about today is charging non-Tesla vehicles at Tesla superchargers. Now, previously, previously done some videos with the Mustang Mach-E uh, last year when uh, it first got its um, access to the superchargers. Uh, it's been about two years now, actually, a little more than two years, since um, automakers first started making announcements that uh, they were going to adopt uh, the Tesla-designed uh, NAX, or now SAJ3400, charging connector and charge port on their vehicles and also doing deals with Tesla to get access to Tesla superchargers, uh, supercharger network, uh, whatever you may think of Tesla uh, and their CEO, the Tesla supercharger network is still the most reliable network out there. Um, and then it was about uh, almost another year after those first announcements, uh, actually about 10 months, I guess, uh, before Ford became, uh, after becoming the first to say, announce they were adopting the NAX connector, they uh, also, got their official access to the superchargers uh, and uh, they started shipping a an adapter that would allow you to plug in a NAX uh, charging cable into an EV that has a CCS charge port. Uh, and the CCS charge ports at that point were on every EV that wasn't a Tesla. Um, now we have a few EVs that are in the market that have native NAX ports built into them that aren't Teslas. Uh, Hyundai started shipping the uh, 2025 Ionic 5. Uh, they're sh shortly going to start shipping the, uh, the Ionic 9 SUV. Um, Kia is shipping the EV6 and EV9 with NAX ports on them now. Uh, Lucid has launched the Gravity SUV um, and there's a lot more coming. But there's still a lot of vehicles on the road that are still being built with CCS ports on them, charging ports, and um, also all of the you know several million uh, or a couple of million uh, non-Tesla EVs that are on the road in North America uh, that have previously been built with CCS ports on them. So uh, when Ford first started um, enabling supercharger access on the uh, the Mach E and the Lightning and E Transit, uh, they uh, started. Uh, ship providing their customers with uh, adapters that were manufactured by Tesla. Uh, and there were some uh, initial production issues with them. The, the, chart, the adapters themselves were good, but Tesla was not able to deliver as many of them as manufacturers wanted. Uh, and uh, this, along with other issues like uh, Elon Musk firing the entire supercharger team for a time uh, last year, uh, caused a lot of delays in other automakers getting access to the superchargers. That's now starting to change. Um, you're seeing more OEMs uh, getting, uh, getting their software updates so they can access the superchargers directly. Um, but we've also seen uh, other adapters besides the Tesla adapter come to market. Uh, around about June of 2024, uh, A to Z was the first company to ship a CCS to or NAX to a CCS adapter, a third party adapter that was uh, approved uh, and followed shortly thereafter by uh, Electron. Uh, Electron makes a lot of uh, chargers, uh, charging cables. I personally have one that, that I bought uh, a few years ago uh, when I first got uh, a 240 volt outlet installed in my garage for uh, testing and, and charging of EVs and plug-in hybrids. Uh, it's been great. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, it's a 9.6 it's a volt or 9.6 kilowatt charging cable. Um, but uh, Electron also uh, shipped uh, uh, their own uh, NAX to CCS adapter. Um, the first batch of them, they had some manufacturing issues with those and it wasn't assembled quite right. Uh, and uh, they had to do a recall on those and they replaced all those for, for customers. It wasn't the, the problem was the latch uh, wasn't assembled correctly that locks the adapter into the port while the vehicle's charging. And that could allow you to unplug the, the cable while the, vehicle, while the vehicle was being charged and while there was high, uh, um, a lot of current flowing through that uh, cable. Not a good thing for safety. You could have arcing, cause a fire, uh, or somebody could get electrocuted. 
um, they subsequently redesigned that and then further redesigned it um, after they did a deal with Ford to also supply Ford with their charging adapters. And that charging adapter is the, um, the Vortex uh, charging, charging adapter, which is this right here. So you can see on, on this end here, we've got a NAX uh, port on there. Same as what you'll find on a Tesla or on a Hyundai Ionic 5 or Lucid Gravity. And then on the other side, you've got a CCS port on here that plugs into the, the CCS port on your vehicle. Um, Ford and um, Electron work together to make a bunch of upgrades to these, you know, provide better thermal monitoring. It's one of the things you want to make sure of with adapters like this is it has to, uh, you have to monitor the temperature so it doesn't overheat. Uh, you know, if it gets too hot, uh, you've got to throttle down or, or shut off the charging so it doesn't melt. Again, you don't want it melting, causing a fire. Um, so they've done a lot of upgrades to these. This is the latest version of the, the Electron Vortex adapter that Electron was nice enough to send to me. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, take this now um, with uh, this 2025 Cadillac Lyric over to my uh, nearby uh, supercharger station. And we're going to try this out. So uh, let's, uh, let's go for a little ride. All right, I am here at uh, my local Tesla supercharger station. And uh, you might notice that uh, this one here is actually equipped with a magic dock, um, which uh, I could use on this vehicle, but I'm not going to, because uh, I want to try out the, uh, the, the, the Vortex adapter. Um, but uh, right now in the Lyric here, I've got uh, currently um, just about 40% state of charge. 117 miles of range left. And uh, we're gonna try this out here in just a minute. Uh, I'm gonna get out um, and uh, we'll see how this works out. All right, so as I said, this is the Electron Vortex adapter. We got CCS on one side here. You notice it's only got the three pins in there. So this doesn't support AC charging. So you can't use this at like Tesla destination chargers or on a home charger. Uh, this only works for DC charging and then You've got the NAX uh, slash SAJ3400 port on the other side here. So on the Lyric, this uh, 25 Cadillac Lyric Sport 3, very nice car, by the way. I really like driving this. Press the button here and the charge port opens up. Pull this little plug here out of there. So there's your CCS port. So the, the process here is you actually have to Plug in the, uh, the adapter first. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna actually move the car up a little further because uh, these supercharger cables are very, very short. So we're gonna move up first and get a little closer. All right, I have uh, moved the car up a little closer, pulled it right up to the curb here because as I said, these uh, superchargers have extremely short charging cables. So we'll pull this back out again. And uh, these, these charging cables on, on these uh, version three chargers are only about three feet long. Uh, so sometimes it's hard to actually reach. But the process for using the adapter is you plug it into the car first, like that, so it latches. And then you pull out the cable and there's our Tesla Max connector and Oh, actually got it to reach. And you plug that in there. And then right now, uh, GM does not have plug and charge capability for Tesla built into their EVs yet. Uh, Ford, Rivian uh, have that. Uh, Hyundai has just announced that they're rolling that out. Um, so is uh, uh, Lucid is also rolling that out now. Uh, but for GM, you still have to use the Tesla app. So I'm gonna pause here for a moment. I'm gonna open up the Tesla app and initiate the charging session. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Uh, I initiated the charging session in the Tesla app. Uh, and uh, once I uh, selected which charger I'm on, which is 2A here at this charging station, uh, I could hear it click uh, on the, uh, the uh, charging cable, the charging connector itself, as well as in the Vortex adapter to lock everything in place. So you can't pull it out while it's charging, which is a good thing. You also hear the fan is running somewhere here. The cooling fan is running inside of the dispenser. Um, all of the, for Tesla superchargers, most of the hardware is actually locked uh, inside these uh, 
uh, walls here where it's actually got most of the charging equipment. These are basically just dispensers. All of the, the work of converting uh, the AC current coming in from the grid to DC is all done inside this little fenced in enclosure here. All the, uh, the actual chargers are in there. Uh, so let's take a look uh, at how this is going. Uh, so, so far, let's see, we're at about 45% state of charge right now. Uh, I, when I first plugged it in, it was actually charging at uh, close to 400 miles an hour. Unfortunately, GM doesn't show you the kilowatts uh, at any moment in time. Um, so we're down to about 300 miles per hour now, which is uh, probably, uh, let's see, about, uh, about 110, um, 115 kilowatts, uh, roughly. Uh, so, you know, I'm already at 46%. If I had started this at a lower state of charge, if I had gotten it down to about 15% or so, we could have seen a peak of as much as about 190 to 200 kilowatts. Uh, but this is this is par for the course of what you'd expect from this vehicle, uh, the way the charging curve is set up. Uh, so it's all working well. Um, it's working smoothly, no problems so far. Um, let me uh, just go back over here. And if I touch the, the adapter here, you can feel it's just slightly warm, but it's not hot at all. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's easy, to, easy to grab. It's not, not burning or anything like that, which is good, which is what you want. Uh, you definitely don't want these things overheating. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just let this run for a little while and we'll come back and check it in a little bit. All right, thanks. All right, I did find uh, where the uh, the Lyric does show you the, uh, the power level uh, while it's charging. Uh, we're currently at about 69, 70% state of charge and it is going 97 kilowatts. Uh, which is still pretty good. That's that's pretty impressive, even you know at this at this uh, state of charge. Um, it's very slowly ramping down. Um, once it gets to about 80%, it'll really start to to knock down. But I'm going to go ahead and pause the charging session now, and uh, I'll be right back. Going to stop that in the uh, in the test lab, and we'll be right back. All right, I have stopped the charging session, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and unplug this, and basically the reverse process. You press the button here, pull out the uh, Tesla connector, plug it back into the charger up here, and then press the uh, the button here on the Vortex adapter, pull that out, and you're good to go. All right. All right, so we have successfully done uh, some charging here at Tesla Supercharger with uh, 2025 Cadillac Lyric and the Electron Vortex charging adapter. So. Uh, it all worked great, no issues at all. It was very smooth, uh, very easy to use. And uh, if you're interested in getting one of these Vortex adapters, um, you can click on the link uh, that will be right below here. Um, that'll take you to the Vortex website and you can get the Vortex adapter uh, for $185. Uh, and uh, it's on sale right now if you use this link. Um, normal price is uh, $249 from direct from Vortex um, and you can also get them through uh, Ford uh, through Ford accessories um, for I think it's the same $249 price uh, so it's basically the same adapter that you get from Ford or directly from Electron um, but uh, it works great and I would highly recommend it if you have a non-Tesla electric vehicle that has a CCS charging port uh, and you want to get access to uh, Tesla superchargers, uh, even if you're if the manufacturer of your vehicle has not officially enabled it yet, or you don't have plug-in charge, you can do it just plugging in and using uh, the Tesla app. Uh, if you are lucky enough to have an EV from Ford or Rivian or Hyundai or Lucid that has plug-in charge support, it's even easier. You just plug it in and it'll automatically charge your whatever payment method you have attached to your account that's tied to your vehicle. But um, yeah, it's it's a great solution. Um, if you have an EV and you are doing, especially if you're doing road trips and you need, um, you want to have more confidence that you'll be able to find more places to charge uh, besides just CCS charging stations like Electrify America or EVgo. Well, they are very slowly starting to deploy some NAX cables on their chargers as well. Uh, IANA, which is a new joint venture 
uh, between eight automakers, uh, GM, Stellantis, uh, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz, Honda, um, and uh, a couple of others that I'm uh, forgetting right now off the top of my head. They now have about uh, 12 or 13 of their charging stations up. They just started opening them up a couple of months ago. Uh, by the end of the year, they hope to have 200 stations. All of their chargers have both CCS and NAX connectors on them. Uh, and they will actually charge it up to 400 kilowatts if you have a, a vehicle that supports that. Uh, but uh, charging an EV is getting a lot easier. You know, you've got the, the fit with the Vortex adapter or uh, any other, you've got access to 15,000 uh, roughly uh, Tesla superchargers. Uh, version of, there has to be a minimum version three supercharger. If you have an older, if it's an older version two supercharger station, it, the, the electron adapter or any other adapter will not work. So over on the other side of Ann Arbor here, there is um, another supercharger station that is uh, um, a version two supercharger. Those are not, those do not support testing, test, <laughs> charging non-Tesla vehicles. Um, it has to be at least a version three or one of the newer version three and a half, version four chargers in order to charge a non-Tesla vehicle. Um, this one here is, and, and the majority of superchargers are now at least version three. Uh, so, uh, and it will charge at up to 250 kilowatts uh, if your vehicle supports that. So uh, it's good, uh, as I said, use the link uh, down below and uh, hopefully uh, get, grab one of these adapters and uh, see how it works out for you. And let us know. Uh, thanks.